How much sleep do you need? You may have heard several suggestions such as 8 hours, 7 hours, 6 to 8 hours, or even up to 9 or 10 hours. But scientifically, how much sleep do you really need? It's not as clear as you might think. Some studies done on large groups of people found that people who slept around 7 hours had the lowest mortality rate. These studies found that sleeping too much or too little was associated with worse health. It is important to note that with these studies, correlation is not causation. These studies were merely surveys, and someone who sleeps 7 hours a day probably has a job and access to better health care, where many people who get more than 9 hours of sleep might be unemployed or depressed. It is still recommended that most people get 7 or 8 hours of sleep per night, but this is just an average. In reality, sleep needs, like many other things, are a bell curve, with the lowest amount being around 6 hours and the highest amount being around 10. There is no magic amount of sleep needed to perform at your best. To personally see if you are getting the right amount of sleep, you can look at several factors. The most obvious is how rested you feel without excessive amounts of caffeine. If you feel awake throughout the day, then you're probably getting enough sleep. If you feel tired the whole day, you probably need to get more. If you fall asleep within 5 minutes of going to bed, you are probably sleep deprived, or if you can't get up easily in the morning. If you use an alarm clock every day of the week because you'll sleep for 15 hours if you don't turn it on, that's probably not a very good thing. Right now, many people are probably thinking, I have to work or study or something during the week. I can't sleep that much. Is it okay to sleep shorter during the week and catch up on the weekends? Just like when someone asks, how much sleep do I need? The answer is not that simple. First, you have to understand the concept of sleep debt. Sleep debt is a fairly simple concept that gets a lot more complicated. It is simply how much sleep you get compared to your optimal amount of sleep. For example, if you need to get 7.5 hours of sleep, but you only get 6.5 hours of sleep, then you have one hour of sleep debt. If you go an entire work week like that, you will have five hours of sleep debt. If you sleep for more than 10 hours on the weekend, will you completely catch up? In order to answer that, you need to understand the difference between chronic and short-term sleep deprivation. An example of short-term sleep deprivation would be staying up late to work on a project that's due tomorrow. In this case, sleeping in the next day would probably regain all of the sleep you lost. Sleep medicine specialist Dr. Reddy puts it like this, If you lose only about 5 hours of sleep throughout the work week, you can probably recover most of the 5 hours on the weekend. However, you may not recover all of the lost sleep if you lose over 20 hours. A study was conducted to find out if you could catch up on sleep over the weekend. Subjects slept for about 8 hours 4 days in a row to establish a baseline. Their sleepiness, cortisol levels, and even their attention span were all measured. After that, they slept for 6 hours 6 nights in a row and 10 hours 3 nights in a row. I don't know why they didn't do 5 nights and 2 nights to simulate a regular work week but they did 6 and 3. After the 3 nights of catch-up sleep, their sleepiness was back to baseline levels. Their cortisol levels, which is a stress hormone, were actually lower than when they started, which implies that they had previous sleep debt that they were playing off during the study. Their attention did not quite go back to baseline levels, though. For this video, let's call 5 hours or less of sleep debt short-term sleep deprivation. With this, sleeping in for two days will probably make up for most of the lost sleep you had during the week. It would be better to get optimal amounts of sleep every day, but catching up on the weekends is definitely better than not catching up at all. One downside though is you might have trouble falling asleep Sunday night if you sleep in really late. Long-term sleep deprivation is a lot different. It is getting a lot less sleep than you should for weeks, months, or even years. With long-term sleep deprivation, it isn't like a bank account you won't be able to make up for every hour you lost. The good news is you won't have to sleep for hundreds of hours to get back to normal, but it will definitely take longer than a weekend. You will have to get slightly more sleep than you need for a very long period of time. Try taking a sleep vacation, where you can sleep without an alarm or go to bed really early if you can. At first, you will probably sleep 10 or more hours a night, but slowly it will get shorter. Eventually, you will get back to regular amounts of sleep then you will feel and perform normally. If you lost an hour of sleep every day for the past year, you shouldn't have to sleep 365 hours to catch up. Sleep is more efficient when you spend a lot of time in REM, and that's exactly what happens when you're catching up on sleep debt. You can get back to normal without caring very much about the sleep you lost six months ago. 
Your sleep debt is biological. The bank analogy only works in small amounts of sleep debt. In other words, some of your debt is forgiven. Sleep is not a waste of time, but it definitely feels like one. Imagine everything you could get done if you had to get less sleep. Would it be possible to engineer ourselves to ever have a need for less sleep in the future? Well, a mother and daughter have a mutation on the gene DEC2, which allows them to never need to sleep more than six hours without having any negative effects. As far as actually getting rid of the need to sleep entirely, it is very unlikely, at least in our lifetimes. Sleep is fundamentally part of our brains, and you would have to almost re-engineer the whole entire thing to get rid of it. But why do you even sleep in the first place? Really, we don't have a definite answer. There are several theories, such as using sleep for rest or strengthening important neural connections and weakening unused ones, but this only happens during REM. What about the other stages of sleep? It is possible to survive on two hours of sleep polyphasically, which is outlined in my polyphasic sleeping video, but I would definitely not recommend it. We may assume we know why we sleep, but we still have a lot of questions. What else do we assume? It's amazing to think that we've gone to the moon, we've created 22 nanometer transistors, and even observed planets light years away through tiny changes in the light from their star, and we are, yet we aren't completely sure how we spend one third of our entire lives. Thank you for watching.